Hello everyone, I am Nandan. I'll be teaching physics for you people. So let us recall certain things which you people have learnt in your lower classes. So the first one is force. Push or pull of an object is called as a force. Push or pull of an object is called as force. The next one is motion. What do we mean by motion? The movement of an object from one place to another place is called as motion. So, force is the cause of motion. So, force can create motion of any object or the motion of an object, the direction of motion of an object can be changed by applying force onto that particular object. So, we all know that our planet Earth revolves around the sun. An object which is made to fall from a certain height will reach the ground after some time. And we also know that our moon revolves around our earth. So there is a certain particular force which is responsible for all these things. So the Newton analyzed all these things and he discovered there was a present of gravitational force in all these scenarios. So thereafter, the gravitational gravitation was discovered. So our chapter is gravitation. So there were few people who laid foundation to this gravity. The first one is Galileo. So Galileo, the person who invented telescope, did some research regarding this. So what he used to do is, he used to go to the leaning tower of Pisa and he used to go throw certain type of objects from a certain height. He recorded that these objects could took different amount of time to reach the ground. Example, a stone, a leaf and a paper would take a different amount of time when they are made to fall from a certain height. So he recorded these observations in his book. So before this, a person called Polary around 2000 years ago, 2000 years ago proposed geocentric model. Geocentric model says that the earth is at the center and all the planets including the sun revolve around it. So this is the earth which is at the center and all the planets would revolve around the earth. We know that this is exactly wrong but this person Ptolemy around 2000 years ago he had proposed this model. Next, a Polish monk from Poland named Nicholas Copernicus. Proposed heliocentric model. Helio means sun, which says that the sun is at the center and all the planets, they revolve around the sun. So this is heliocentric model. This was proposed by Nicholas Copernicus. He was a Polish monk from Poland. The next one is Tycho Brahe. This person, Tycho Brahe, spent his entire lifetime in recording observations of the planets and the sun only through his naked eye. So you might ask me, how can a person record observations only through the naked eye without uh, using any kind of telescopes or electronic gadgets? So we know that in a year we have a longest day or a, and a shortest day. And we also know that there is a longest night and a shortest night. And we also know that there is a full moon day, there is a solar eclipse, lunar eclipse and all these phenomena can be seen or observed through the naked eye. Yes, we also know that. So there are planets which can be seen through our naked eye. The Venus, the Mars could be seen at certain point of uh, time in a year. 
So we all know this, isn't it? So these observations were made by Tycho Brahe at that time and he recorded in a book there. Okay, after this person Tycho Brahe is assistant, he had an assistant called as Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler. So this person later analyzed all the observations which were made by Tycho Brahe and he proposed his famous three laws of planetary motion which are still now they are in use. After all these things there comes the hero of this picture called as the Sir Isaac Newton in the 17th century. I hope you all know the famous story. It is said that the Newton was sitting under an apple tree. An apple fell on him. So this made the Newton to, to think that so the apple could have gone anywhere. It could have gone towards left or towards right. Even it could have gone towards upwards also. But the apple fell on him itself. So he conducted a series of experiments to do this to verify this so what had really happened there so for this purpose itself so he came to know that there was a certain kind of force called as gravitational force which attracted that apple for that reason itself the apple fell towards the earth so he analyzed this by conducting a series of experiments so the first question which, he, which came to his mind was if the earth could attract the apple is it not possible that the moon can also be attracted towards the earth yes our earth attracts the moon also but we have seen apple falling towards the earth but we never saw that the moon falling towards the earth we have never seen that we have never saw from the childhood that our moon falling towards the earth. So there should be a reason for that. So what he did was, he did a simple experiment for this, to verify this phenomenon. So he took a stone and he tied a thread onto that stone and he began to brill it. So if you tie a stone onto a thread and if you can brill it, it will pursue a circular path like this. Like this it will have a circular path. So this will be the stone so if you hold from here if you drill it it will pursue a circular path so you can clearly see that so the force is directed towards the center so if i hold the thread from here and if i drill it the force will be directed towards the center so it is definitely a center seeking force okay so or in other words it is the centripetal force that on the stone for that reason itself the stone will be pursuing in the circular path so if I leave the thread the stone will take a straight path like this so or if I if I leave the stone here it will take a straight path here ok if I while drilling the stone if I leave like this so the stone will take a straight path so the same thing will apply to moon also. So the moon is revolving around the earth just because of this central seeking force or centripetal force. For this reason itself the moon is revolving around the earth. If there was no such force then the moon would have pursued in a straight path itself. But unfortunately we have this centripetal force that is acting on that moon and the moon is revolving around the earth. So this was his first question. And the next question which he had in his mind was, so if the apple could attract, apple was attracted by our earth, we saw that. So can, is it not possible that the earth could also be attracted by the apple? So this was his next question. So we never saw that if the earth could attract, if the earth could be attracted by the apple, then the earth should move towards the apple. 
or if the moon could attract the earth the earth should move towards the moon we have never seen our earth moving towards the moon or towards the apple we have not seen that but according to this newton's third law we all know that action and reaction are equal and opposite so for every given force there will force of action there will be an equal and opposite reaction so if an object could attract then in turn the another object will, should also attract the same object so the apple is attracted by the earth then the earth should also be attracted by the apple but we have not seen that the earth is being attracted by the apple why because of the second law of motion that is newton's second law for a given force for a given force the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass for a given force the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass so what happens here is the when the mass of the apple is compared with the mass of the earth it is very negligible so the map, the mass of the apple is very negligible so even if the apple is attracting the earth it doesn't have that much amount of mass to attract the earth towards the apple so for that reason itself the earth is not moving towards the apple the same thing can be applied to the moon also even the moon is attracting the earth but we have not seen the earth moving towards the apple the moon because when the mass when the when the mass of the moon is compared with the mass of the earth it is very small so clearly it says that the moon should revolve around the earth okay so the third question he got in his mind was is it only the apple is being attracted by the earth or is it the only the moon that is being attracted by the earth or is it only the earth that is being attracted by the sun only is these things few things that are yeah, they are being attracted or not so this is or all other things they are being attracted by one another so this is the third question which he had in his mind so the apple is being attracted by the earth and our earth is being attracted by the sun and all the planets they revolve around the sun because the sun is having such kind of gravitational force upon these planets because of that gravitational force itself all the planets they are revolving around the sun so our solar system is in milky way galaxy and we have a neighboring galaxy called as andromeda galaxy so our galaxy is our milky way galaxy is being attracted by the andromeda galaxy our neighboring galaxy and that andromeda galaxy is also being attracted by our milky way galaxy so every object that is present in our universe is being attracted by every other object that is present in the universe i'll repeat again every object that is present in the universe is being attracted by every other a uh, material object that is present in the universe and thus he defined the gravitation so gravitation is the force of attraction between two bodies so gravitation is the force of attraction between the two bodies by virtue of their masses so gravitation can only happen if there exists a mass between two bodies so gravitation is the force of attraction between the two bodies by virtue of their masses and you need to know the difference between the mass and weight mass and weight so these two are very different from each other they are not same so the mass is the amount of matter that is present in a system is called as the mass the amount of matter that is present in a particular map a particular molecule is called as a mass the amount of matter that is present in the system is called as the mass and the amount of gravity that acts on that particular mass is called as weight so the amount of gravity that acts on that particular mass is called as weight so you need to know one thing that the mass of an object can never vary the mass of an object will remain constant at every point 
but the weight of an object can vary at every point. Okay, so you need to know about these two things in this chapter.